there's a lot of hurdles that we have to get over. Um, but so far, particularly with vaccine development, we're clearing those hurdles, which is great. So we're, we're seeing some candidates that are emerging um, and it, it seems quite clear that they're um, fairly safe. Uh, they seem to induce the kinds of immune response that we would predict would protect against this particular virus. And so the, the key question next is, are these vaccines going to be protective? Um, so we've seen uh, a few key front runners that have emerged over the past few weeks. Um, and those are a couple of mRNA vaccines that are coming from companies like Moderna Therapeutics, um, BioNTech. Um, and uh, as well as some a viral vector vaccine from CanSino Biologicals, which, which seems to be quite effective in this, this new um, Chimpad OXO1 vector that's from University of Oxford and Ast AstraZeneca. And they're all inducing really robust immune responses, as good, if not better, than what we would see in people who have recovered from SARS-CoV-2 infection. Mm, so all those big runners from the US, the very exciting news from UK and also China as well. So as someone who's not a, a medical expert, you know, talk me through the steps about how a vaccine is ready for worldwide distribution, because I'm reading about phase one to phase three. Talk me through those just point by point very quickly. First off, we start with preclinical, which is can we look in, in, in the lab in animal models and in, in cell culture and see if the vaccines um, look promising. And then we move them into human trials, which, which are a lot more challenging. Um, so human trials start with phase one. We've maybe got 10 to 50 people and we're looking there for safety of the vaccine and what dose should we use going forward. Um, the next phase is phase two. So that's looking maybe in up to a thousand people. And the question there that we're asking is uh, what kind of immune response and how, um, what size of an immune response are we inducing in people that receive the vaccine? Do we think it, it's the right kind of immune response to protect against that particular pathogen? So once we have that information, and that's what several of these, these vaccines are now at that stage, that finish phase one, phase two, we then move into phase three trials. And so the question in phase three, um, we're now working in sort of tens of thousands of people. So um, some trials look like they'll recruit around 30,000 people. And we're asking, is the vaccine actually going to protect against infection? So we're trying to move the, the vaccine into the real world. Um, use it in the patient groups that we need to, the diverse age ranges, different uh, geographic locations. Um, and so once we've done that, once we've shown that it can be protective, then we build a case, we build a package of information that we can deliver to regulatory bodies around the world and, and put the case forward for a licensure of the vaccine. Why is actually competition um, so healthy for the vaccine market? The vaccine market is huge. <laughs> so if we're talking about um, what we need to, to provide protection uh, for the world population, we're talking 8 billion doses at least. And if we think about um, the biggest vac vaccine manufacturer in the world is a place called the Serums Institute of India. And they can produce 1.5 billion doses per year. And they still need to make those vaccines. But we need to make SARS-CoV-2 vaccines in addition to that. So it's a huge market. Um, and I think it's, it's really important to remember that we're, I guess we're racing against the virus and time, but we're not vac uh, racing against each other. So there's a huge amount of room in the market for multiple vaccines. Absolutely. It's a global effort to, to find a solution to the problem. What do we know about how COVID-19 mutates and how effective a vaccine against one strain could be versus another? We're still finding a lot out you know, about uh, COVID-19. Um, but one of the key things, this SARS-CoV-2 is an RNA virus. And so generally that means that they, uh, they might have a slightly higher mutation, but people have been tracking this virus around the world now. Um, and they're finding that it's, it doesn't have a super high rate of mutation. And so for a benchmark, for example, we might compare it to say influenza. And so it doesn't mutate as quickly as we would see with, with influenza, for example. Um, so there have been though, there has been one variant that has emerged uh, with a mutation that seems to uh, make the virus replicate slightly quicker. It does, um, it hasn't, we haven't seen any difference with that variant emerging in terms of disease severity. So we don't think it's making the d disease more severe and it doesn't change the ability of the immune response to recognize the virus. 
so we think that despite that, that small change, uh, we think the virus is still a really good candidate for a vaccine. In your opinion, in your, your gut feeling, in the million dollar question, of course, you know, when do you think a vaccine will be ready? So I think we can expect uh, phase three trials to continue for the rest of this year. Um, and there might be opportunities. So usually with phase three trials, we have what we call interim analyses. So um, there are specific committees that can look at the data that's starting to come together. And it can look for hints of whether the vaccine might be protecting against that particular pathogen. And so off the basis of that, there could be things like emergency use approvals that emerge. So um, the vaccine could be approved to, uh, to be used in specific groups that have really high risk of infection, such as healthcare workers. Um, but I think we'll find out this year whether the vaccine actually works and protects against an infection. Um, and next year is the real challenge of making enough of the vaccine to meet demand. So 2021 will be the year of manufacturing. Thank you so much uh, for your conversation today. We'll get in touch with you again. Good to talk to you, Elaine.